In this recorded tutorial, I want to show you the hatch tool and how it compares to the wipeout tool. So for this, I'm going to pick the polyline tool. I'm just going to draw a shape and I'm going to click close so that we have a closed polyline. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to draw another one over here. And this time I'm going to leave it open. So I'll just go to enter just so that you can see the difference. The hatch tool lives on the draw panel on the home tab just here. And when I click that, you can see that I get this hatch creation toolbar menu. And I get two options on the first panel, pick points or select objects. I like to use the pick points tool. So I'm going to click on there and you can see that I've now got the option to pick an internal point. And even when I hover over this shape, I get a preview of what that hatch is going to look like. And when I click, it's then done. And it's as simple as that really. You can see that I've got different patterns here and at the moment I'm on solid and that solid color is being picked up by layer. And on this one, which isn't a closed boundary, you can see it doesn't give me a preview and it won't work. If I try and click in here, it says that the closed boundary cannot be determined and it even shows me where that error is. It gives me two red circles that I can try and complete that shape. Once I've finished with that hatch, I can move it around. I can drag it, I can move it. If I go to right click move, you can see that it is its own object, which is good because it means that I can actually put this onto its own layer if I wanted. I could go to home and I could change that to the hatch layer and have my own, own uh, layer just for the hatches. I'm just going to undo this just a little bit so that we get back to having our closed shape without hatch. I'm just going to put in another hatch this time, but I want to show you this pattern drop down. And you can see that we've got all different types of patterns that we can get to by default. We've got some gradients in there too. And one of the patterns that I want to draw your attention to is this one here, which is called AR Conk, which is a kind of concrete um, hatch, which is very useful in theatre because you'll find a lot of theatres will have concrete walls and structures. And so it's really nice to be able to denote where they are on a ground plan. So once I hover over, oh, go to pick points. Once I hover over here and click, you can see that I get this concrete pattern showing up. Now I can change around with a few of the properties on this. So I can go come up here onto the scale and I can change the scale of this. I can make it bigger. At the moment it's one and I can put two to make it twice as big. Or I can scale the pattern down and put, let's say, 0.5, and you can see that it becomes half as big. Um, I can put it on its own layer, as we've already determined, and I can even change the transparency of this. You can see that as I start to pull this handle and change the hatch transparency, it starts to disappear. And if there are other objects underneath there, then they would show through. Now, the reason I'm seeing that transparency is because down here on my status bar icon, I've got transparency on. And if I switch that off, then it will um, take that transparency away for the time being. If I select this object, you can see that I can change that after the event. So I might say, oh, actually, I wanted that one, brick or brass, and I can play around with these until I'm happy with the results. OK, you can see that this is associative by default, which is the only way I use it, really. I think that's the most useful way, because that means that once you've finished, um, you can come back in here and it, obviously everything is now associated. So it's just one object rather than each little piece being its own thing. OK, in this next example, I'd like to demonstrate the difference between hatch and wipeout. And in order to do that, I've created this little scenario. So I've got a few lines here that are going through on a sort of right angle. And above that, I've got a rectangle for a text box and some text written there using the multi-line text tool. OK, so if you want to follow along, then feel free to draw something very similar. Now, at the moment, you can see that the text isn't very legible because it's got all these lines running through it. So I suppose what I could do is trim out these lines back to the rectangle boundary. Or you may be forgiven for thinking that this is probably a good example of using a hatch tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this. I'm going to go to hatch and I'm going to go to the solid pattern. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on white so you can see where I am at the moment. So the way I got there was I got to more colors, uh, pick true color, make sure that it's set to white. 
which gives us an RGB value of 255255255. Great. Click OK. Go to Select Objects and select this rectangle. And you can see now that I've got exactly what I wanted. I've got this sort of hatch that sits there in between the background and the text and creates this, um, this lovely text box that's readable. However, there's a problem with this. And the problem is, is that because I used white hatch, if I was to save this file and give it to someone else to use, um, and they were using a dark background, let's just change this, let's say to black, click apply and close, click close. And the problem with this is that, as you can see, you get this uh, white blob in the middle of your drawing and you can't read the text. Um, and that's just purely because we've that's what we created. We created a hatch that is white. So hatches aren't really the way to go with this. So I'm just going to select that hatch and press delete and get rid of it. And instead of using a hatch, I'm going to use a wipeout. Um, and wipeouts live in the draw panel and the drop down. And it's the second one in uh, and it says wipeout. You can see that the shortcut for this is just to type in wipeout at any point. Press enter and it will put you into this tool. Now this tool is great because it will create the same effect but the background will morph and we'll demonstrate that now. So you can see it says specify first point. So I'm just going to click on the boundary of this rectangle. And you can see the wipeout um, sort of works a bit like a rubber band. So you can just click around the border of your drawing and then click OK. And there is our wipeout. Now at the moment it's sitting at the very front so we need to make sure it sits behind the text so I'm just going to um, select that and go right click draw order send under objects let's see if I can pick up this uh, text where is it somewhere in here there it is press enter perfect it's now sitting in front of this line behind that text and that's exactly the same situation as we had with the hatch really isn't it with one difference and that is that if we was to change the background color back to let's say white click apply and close click OK ah, well it looks like nothing's happened but this is the little thing with AutoCAD sometimes you just need to refresh the screen and the quick way of doing that is just type in regen and just regenerate the drawing and there you can see it's refreshed the screen and that's exactly what we wanted okay and this doesn't just work with black and white just to prove that this will work with any color I'm going to come and change this to a red background click OK regenerate the drawing and there you can see it's the, the, the wipeout is changing to match the background so it's a lovely little trick, lovely little tool to know about. And we're going to use that later on when we draw our title block. There is another way of using the wipeout tool. And let's say that I had another rectangle here. Okay. And instead of coming to the wipeout tool and tracing around it, which for a rectangle is not too bad, but if it was a funny shape, then of course it might take a little while. What we can do is you can see it says specify first point or and it's got a down arrow key. If I press the down arrow on my keyboard, I can choose to go to polyline. And now it says select a closed polyline and it will use that shape to create a wipeout. And it says, do you want to erase that polyline? Yes or no. So I can select yes if I wanted and it will delete the rectangle and replace it with a wipeout. Okay. Now, if you're not seeing that, that, that border of the wipeout, then there is another setting that's worth knowing about. If I go to wipeout tool one more time, and you can see the other one was frames, and it's called a frame, not a border. And if I was to go and switch the border off, you can see that the borders disappear on all of the wipeouts. And that is a global setting for the drawing. You can't pick uh, on an individual wipeout, unfortunately. I'm not too sure why, it just happens to be a global parameter that you're setting. So I'm just going to go back to frames one more time and switch it back on like this. And there you can see I have a wipeout that um, I used the rectangle to create and then swapped it out. So it's now actually a wipeout. And if I move this 
you can see that it is actually a wipeout box. Now this is um, really good, but causes another little problem here because you may have noticed that wipeouts will only work in a straight line. If I wanted to do a wipeout with a curve or a circle, so I had this shape here, okay, and I'm just going to join those two together. So you might remember from the previous video that we have the join tool, um, which is this one here, or I quickly I can just type in J enter for join and that is now one object. Let's try and create a wipeout using this shape. I'm going to go to polyline, hover over my polyline, and you can see it doesn't work. It says here the polyline must be closed and made up of only line segments. So it's not going to work because it's got a curve in it. So this can cause us a problem, um, but it's one that we can actually fix. And for this, I'm going to show you another tool. Let's put a an arc here as an example. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I need to convert this arc to lines. Now there is actually a plugin you can download for free that will do this, but it isn't available on Lipper computers. So I'm going to show you the manual way of doing it. And for this, I'm going to introduce you to another um, tool, which is this one here uh, called Divide. In fact, there's two, Divide and then there's Measure. And we're going to go to Divide for today. And you can see it says, select the object to divide. So I'm going to click on it. It says, how many segments do you want? Now, this is, um, imagine you're taking a curved line and you're going to create a, a polygon out of it. So the more points you have, the smoother that arc will look. So I'm just, I'm just going to do 12 for today. Just, it's going to be quite coarse, but it will just give you an idea of what you can do. So I'm going to type in 12, press enter, and that's happened. That's worked, believe it or not. Now, if I was to take this arc and delete it, you may just be able to make out that there's some dots there where that arc was, and it's divided it into 12 segments. Now, if you can't quite see that, I'm just going to change my background to black, and you may notice it a little bit more. Can you see those white dots? Now, they're called nodes. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to draw lines between each node. And in order to get a snap point, I need to get my snap set to find nodes. And now you'll see that I can actually snap straight to those nodes. Okay, so I'm just going to trace that round like this. Okay, and press enter when I'm done. And the last thing I need to do is I need to delete these nodes because they're going to be on top of lines. And the next thing you need to know is that wipeouts will only work if you've got one layer of lines. If you've got lines on top of lines or objects on top of objects, it's not going to work. Okay, so you may need to just remember that when you're drawing, you need to make sure you've only got one line deep on these 2D drawings. Because when you come to doing things like this or 3D work, it can cause you problems. So I've got my first node selected and I can go along and I can select them all. Or there's a shortcut, I can go right click, select similar, and then just hit delete. And I'm left with just my lines. Okay, let me continue drawing this then into some sort of shape. Let's say that it was like this as a closed loop. Okay, now I can select all of those lines and those two, oops, and right click, um, select similar, would have done the same thing. And now I've selected them, I'm going to go J enter for join, and you can see that this is now one single polyline. Okay, now I can create a wipeout. So I'm going to go to the wipeout tool, press down to select a polyline. And select that closed polyline and it says yes I've worked do you want to erase that I'll click yes and now what I actually have here is a wipeout and just to prove that I'm just going to draw some lines in like this send them to the back so they're behind the wipeout and you can see that that is now a wipeout that's been created and this one wouldn't work with an arc but this one has worked using 
lines as an arc. So that was using this tool here, divide, a very handy tool to know about when you need it.